Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. If this space looks new, it's because I'm trying out a new studio. I'm super excited about it. It looks like a real podcast studio. I've been shooting everything in my like white cyclorama photography studio, which I know some of you don't dig, but some of you you know, think looks cool. I think I had it once referred to as a um, Apple store, which I thought was kind of <laughs> appropriate. Um, so yeah, so we're coming to you from a new space. We have a new guest. Well, sort of new. I had her on very briefly at the ABN show before the pandemic um, when I was recording from the adult time booth. And she was so fascinating that I knew I had to have her come back for like a full episode because 10 minutes is just not enough for the one and only Leia Falcon. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. And um, again, I know I said this before, but I really appreciate you coming in. I know like you came straight from the airport. and Well, like... I appreciate you waiting because I know we were like trying to arrange this for a while yeah but. yeah no but you were in school yeah and now you're done and now I'm done oh my god like don't remind me I might start crying again you must be so happy I'm so happy like I never thought I would actually go to college or graduate so what did you go to study for communication with a minor in marriage and family therapy oh wow so what are your plans on what are your plans with that degree? Okay, my plans with that particular degree is I would like to do a very large gangbang, and then at the end, I want to put the degree up my butt. <laughs> you're the you're the best person I've ever met. <laughs> like, like I want to wear like my <laughs> gown and cap and everything. You would actually do that, wouldn't you? I would one hundred million percent. I've been saying it like since I. <laughs> got into college like what are you gonna do with your degree and I'm like what else stick it up my butt <laughs> but like in reality I feel like you you must have had other reasons besides the gangbang and shoving it up your ass which is a wonderful reason <laughs> believe me that is like that is a great reason to get a college degree but like there weren't any other extenuating um, circumstances I mean I kind of just wanted to be a good example for my daughter and maybe others in the industry like look you can do this or you can do that and it's cool like you're not just stuck doing one thing Mm because I know a lot of times um people in the industry like we get that stigma and everything so I kind of just wanted to fight some of that in my own little way Mm -hmm. and then like I'm eventually going to get a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, and I'm going to specialize in sex therapy. What are you going to do with that degree? Um, Because, I mean... I'm probably just going to do online therapy sessions. Oh, I thought you were going to, like, shove it up your butt. Oh, no, I'll do do a DP. Okay. A DP, two degrees, (laughs) one in the butt and one in the vag. Oh, my God, I love it. Um, that is fantastic. I mean, I, I totally hear you. I actually, I have a degree in English literature, which, you know, that's awesome. really come in handy. But like, I started working in the industry while I was still going to college. And I knew that I was probably never going to do anything with that degree. But same thing. I just yeah. wanted to go to college. I just wanted to have a college degree. Like have it to have it. Just have it to have it. And also just like, you never know. And I kind of, I enjoyed school. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed learning. I've definitely gotten much dumber since I'm no longer in school. <laughs> but, you know, like there was a there was a time when I could sort of quote Shakespeare and I could Same. tell you about the significance of like um, female empowerment in the romantic literature poets. That was my thesis. Oh, OK. So but now I, I don't remember what I wrote, but I'm sure it was brilliant. <laughs> I can't tell you anything about romance. I'm sorry. <laughs> Like sex, sure. Romance. I also feel like I have to say, um, may the 4th be with you. Yes. Today is, the day that we're recording uh, is May 4th, and you're a big Star Wars fan. Yes, I got my little Princess Leia shirt. And your name itself comes from Star Star Wars. Wars. Correct. So, like, what... Like, when did you first get introduced to Star Wars? Do you have a favorite movie? Oh, like, who's your favorite character? And then also, you mentioned you had an experience this morning at the yes. airport. So. Oh, my God. It was near orgasmic. 
Okay, so I've been into Star Wars since I was eight years old. Like, I've posted pictures before of me with my little Princess Leia Barbie and, like, standing next to an R2-D2 and, like, just, like, chunky little fat kid. And I'm like, that's still me. That's what I still feel like. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, like, basically, like, I saw Princess Leia and I was like, oh, she has a gun. She's super cool. And I saw Darth Vader and I was like, oh, he's kind of hot. So, yeah, but... Oh my God, the most amazing thing happened today. So when I landed here at LAX, like I was walking like do, 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 do. And then all of a sudden I look up and there's Darth Vader and his stormtroopers. And I'm like, oh my God, it's Darth Vader. And they're like, all looking at me like, I'm like, no, you don't understand. That is Darth Vader. God damn it. And, like, that was just amazing. It was a great welcome. Were they, like, about to board a flight? Like, man, I'm not sure, but they were they were there, and I was like, I cannot believe this. This is crazy. That is so interesting. Or they were just there, like, kind of like that you have the people on, like, Hollywood Boulevard that are just dressed in costumes. Yeah, there, like, but they were, like, happy. official costumes, not, like, the... the little, like, Party City costumes. Yeah, yeah, and that's just expensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cosplay I mean, cosplay is very, 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 very expensive. And you're really into cosplay. Very much so. So what are, I mean, I think we, I think most people who follow you know that you're really into Harley Quinn. Very, 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 very much, way too much, maybe a little bit unhealthy. <laughs> what is it about Harley Quinn that, like, speaks to you? Basically, like, she's, I feel like if I were... A fictional character that would be me Mm -hmm. or if she were a real person she would be me um because like she's gone through so much with like toxic dudes Mm -hmm. and like to watch her go from the joker the fucking asshole to like rising above that and having her own thing going on Like, I think that's amazing because, like, it's just, like, it shows you no matter how long, like, you're in a bad relationship, you can always just leave and do better, which, if it's Mm -hmm. bad, like, between Joker and Harley, absolutely fucking leave. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's kind of a better role model than, like, the Disney princesses from, you know, like, early Disney days because I mean I think we see that you know the Disney movies nowadays are much more like cognizant of you know not casting women as like these helpless victims but it's interesting because you know I have a I have a one and a half year old and so like you know we watch Disney movies so I've gone back and watched some older movies that I haven't seen since I was a kid and I'm sitting there going like Uh uh-uh, like, don't wait for your prince to come save you. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this is bullshit. Like, you can be your own person without this man, like, rescuing you from the tower. I guess I didn't realize the messages that it was sending until I was older. Yeah, like, I've noticed that, like, a lot of Disney movies... I love Disney, by the way. (laughs) Um, A lot of these Disney movies, it's just like, okay, like... Sleeping Beauty, she's sleeping, and here comes this dude coming and kissing her. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, that's gross. How mm-hmm. did like how did you know she wanted to kiss? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't. It's just it's so crazy going back and watching old stuff. Yeah, and then applying like modern day standards. Yeah, to it. yeah, because there's that whole. So yeah, I watched Sleeping Beauty recently, and there's that whole sequence when she's walking through the forest and she's singing. And then he shows up and he starts singing. But, and at first she's like, whoa, who are you? Where'd you come from? And she's just like, get away from me. And he keeps like pawing at her. You know what I mean? Like, and then eventually she's like, oh no, this is great. Like, that's what I wanted all along. Like, thank you for like convincing me like stranger in the middle of the woods. Stranger danger. I know. And I was just watching this. I'm like, this is, this, this guy is like, this is not good behavior (laughs) no it's not and I don't think our children should be seeing that and thinking that if someone is persistent enough yeah that that means okay go ahead and give it to him no that's creepy 
That's, you know, what other um, old, uh, like, music video models that is Michael Jackson's uh, Pretty Young Thing. Oh, man, I can't even remember that. Dude, so he's literally stalking this girl, like, through the city streets, and she's, like, trying to get away from him. That's terrifying. And he's, like, stalking her and, like, singing and dancing on cars and stuff like that. And she's, like, who is – it's, like, it's actually, like, pretty creepy when you watch it. I'm pretty sure it's Pretty Young Thing. I'm going to have to watch that. Go watch that. And I'm just going to be, like, this is terrifying. Yeah, it's kind of like, whoa, dude. (laughs) Man. But – you know, it's really uh, porn is actually the problem here. It's, it's, uh, I don't think porn is a problem <laughs> because porn is it's a fantasy. Yeah. Like, I mean, also Disney and all that. It's all like a fantasy. But the thing is, a lot of people like to think of porn as reality mm-hmm. without realizing that it's a fantasy. And mm-hmm. like they can't they don't know how to differentiate between the two right right and the problem is too i think that porn this is an interesting segue that we just had but porn like when i think when people misunderstand porn or misread porn they're these are the kind of people that grew up with like no sex education so they don't understand like what is actually healthy like what is consent what is healthy boundaries and so they have no introduction to sex no one's taught them about it so the first time that they like see anything that's modeled, it's like porn, which is yeah. not meant to be. It's um, not an educational tool. Right. It's for entertainment purposes only right. for yeah. adults. Yeah. No, no kids. Do you encounter <laughs> that where people like think that you are somebody else than you are? Like they approach you, like, especially at convent, you know, we just had Miami exotica. Um, I know, you know, AVN's back in form, technically beginning of next year, do you find that people approach you in ways that, um, you know, is kind of disrespectful because they think you're a certain way because they, what do they see on film? I get disrespected all the freaking time. Like every time I'm online, it's like every, not every guy, but a lot of guys feel like they're entitled to me. Mm -hmm. And I've made it clear throughout the years I do not escort. You are not touching me. If you're a slave, like nothing sexual is happening. No. Like what I do on camera is for camera. Mm -hmm. What I do in real life is I'm just chill. I'm just me. Like it's like, I wouldn't say it's totally different because it's a lot of my personality that I put into my scenes, Mm -hmm. but I'm definitely more finicky about like who I allow to stick their dick in me or pussy on my face. Well, that's the thing too. I think people watch porn and they think, Oh, these girls are just fucking all these random strangers, not realizing that they're like, there's a, there's gen, there's actually a pretty small pool of specifically male performers that work all the time. And so a lot of times, especially if you're like up the upper echelon of talent and you can be selective about who you work with, you're kind of working with like the same, like, eight dudes like your whole career so yeah this idea that like you'll just have sex with anybody it's like no it's It's insane i'm just like who raised y'all yeah like when i say because i'll be like can you please not talk to me like that and then they'll like like the prince with sleeping beauty Mm -hmm. just keep going and going and going Mm -hmm. i'm like no and then i have to block them yeah like i told you no if you keep being persistent about it i'm gonna have to Block you because that's not cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about how Leah got started in the adult industry and, of course, about cuckolding, about her slaves, and all that fun stuff, which makes her like such a fascinating guest. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is like the biggest online sex toy retail store. And in fact, they don't just offer sex toys. They also have movies, they have lingerie. They basically have anything sexy that you could be looking for. Now they have an incredible offer. Get 50% off of any one item when you go to adamandeve.com. But that's not where it ends. So not only will you get 50% off any one item, They will also load up 10 free gifts for you on top of that. You will get six free movies, a free mystery pack that includes an item for him and a special toy for her and something we know you'll both enjoy, plus free shipping. 
Now that's a lot of free stuff, but you can only get this offer if you go to adamandeve.com and use my code HOLLY. That's adameve.com. Use code HOLLY for 50% off of any one item plus 10 free gifts. All right, everybody, we are back. So Leah, let's take us back to the beginning. How did you get into the adult industry? Oh, man. Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say what age I wanted to do it from, but it was a very young age. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I just always had this dream. I was like, I'm going to be a porn star. And people thought I was kidding. And I'm like, I'm dead for cereals right now. And just like when I got older and like old enough, I turned 18, um, I got into webcamming. That kind of got boring. I didn't really like it because like I don't like people telling me what to do. <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bad at it. That's why like I, I'm really bad at customs. I'm like, that's, but I'm very selective with customs yeah. and webcamming. Like I don't. I don't do the whole, like, um, I mean, some very rarely, but Mm -hmm. I'm not going to just hop on Mm -hmm. camera and do whatever you say. Right. Like, no, like more like the other way around. Right. (laughs) Um, no, but so, hold on, excuse me. Um, (laughs) damn. Okay. So I did that and I was like, oh, fuck this. I'm going to go be a stripper. So, and, like, during this whole time, I was with my ex-husband, so obviously, like, he didn't want me doing porn, so I was like, dude, being a stripper, sure, why not? Mm -hmm. Um, I ended up pregnant with my daughter and had her, we got married, we weren't married when I got pregnant. Um, That's okay, I wasn't married when I got pregnant (laughs) either, it's totally fine. (laughs) Like, and then just after catching him cheating for like the five million and 21st time Mm -hmm. i was like fuck you i'm gonna go do what i want to do and then so i came out here and is that all so what was your first scene my first scene was with mike adriano for bang bros okay um the site i think it was big tit cream pie Mm -hmm. and Like, I think it was cool, except for at the very end, like, with the cream pie. When he cream pied me, I was like, I don't don't know if I like this so much. Like, because I feel like cream pies are a very intimate thing. They are, yeah. And I'm like, for porn? Like, unless if I'm, like, really, like, if I'm in the relationship with the dude or, like, really close with them, I don't... I can't do the the whole cream pie thing. It's like mm-hmm. it it's too too intimate for me. <laughs> I don't like yeah. I don't like it with um just like for work. Yeah. But in my personal life, absolutely. Yeah. And then for those of you who don't know, because sometimes we have listeners who aren't super familiar with porn jargon, cream pie is when the guy comes inside the girl. And then generally like for visual purposes, she like kind of pushes it out and the semen like leaks out of her and which is hard to sometimes get on film. Like sometimes yeah. Because if it shoots up too far inside, yeah. Like getting it to like come back out is I've only shot a couple of cream pies and I've found them to be quite tricky. I mean, like as long as the dude like pulls back a little bit further before he's about to come, then yeah then it's fine. But if he's like all deep up in there, like there's no way that's coming out. No. Like no. you got to dig that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> or you got to go get like the fake like spunk lube and like put it at the entrance yeah. and then like pretend like that's the semen. We've done that. I've done that. Yeah. But it's definitely, um, yeah, I literally think I've shot like maybe two cream pies my entire 24 year career. Oh damn. And um, it was, I was, 
like I re- actually remember when I shot like the last one, I, I think I called Mike Quasar and I was like, I have to shoot a cream pie scene. I'm like, how does this work? Like, how do I make sure that like we see it come out afterwards? Because Mike, bless his heart, has shot a lot of cream pies. And he's probably like, hold on, let me go grab my Jack Daniels. <laughs> and I hate life. I'm going to jump off the freeway tomorrow. But first, let me tell yes. you how to shoot cream pies. <laughs> And then he'll be like, okay, I'll live another day. Yeah. He's funny. He is funny. And of course, as if you watched my previous interview with Leia at the um, ABN Awards, you'll know that like the first time I kind of was introduced to you was through Mike when he told that story about the slave that you brought to set. Do you want to just quickly rehash that story super fast for those who have not heard it? Because it's such a good story. I had a long-term live-in slave for a while um, a real life, like real time, not just like over the internet, though mm-hmm. I do have slaves over the internet as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like, it did a lot of things for me. Like it, like it bought me a house. It bought me like all the shit that I wanted, all the Harley Quinn shit, all the cosplay shit, like basically whatever I wanted, I got. Um, so I went, I brought it with me to go do this gangbang orgy thing. And I was like, okay, after I was like covered in cum and I was like, hey, slave, come here and lick the cum off of me. This is your treat. (laughs) And it was so happy and I was just like, this is hilarious. Like it's empowering yeah but hilarious like yeah. it just it gives me joy to have that much control over someone well and clearly it gave that person joy as well yes it did so. and until they got real creepy and mm. then i was like nope bye so you had to end things with that slave yeah because like it kept wanting more and i'm mm. like look dude like i told you from the beginning There's nothing going to happen, like nothing sexual. I'm not going to fucking marry you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to date you. I won't even pretend that I am. Mm -hmm. So. So those rules were set out for. From it. I've noticed the pronoun for for it, It. not him, it. Yeah. Um, And at some point he just couldn't, like, he kept pushing the, the boundaries. Yeah. And I was just like, this is too much. I'm out. Right. So how do your slaves like function these days? Like what you said you have internet slaves. Do you have yes. in-person slaves currently? I mean, I have some, but I haven't seen more than a couple since the pandemic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause it's just like, I don't want to get the coronas and die. Yeah. So I'm just now like opening up again for real time sessions. And like, I was so busy with school too. Yeah. Um, but usually like over like the internet will do Skype or just chat. Mm-hmm. It really depends on the sub or the slave. Right. Some of them like to be called like different things. And mm-hmm. so it's like a very tailored, unique experience. Right. Yes. Depending on who it is. Yeah. It's not like cookie cutter for everyone. Right. What is, um, like, what are some examples? Like, what is, like, what would be one person's preferences? There's a lot of guys out there that are like, call me a loser, like, make fun of my dick, all this, like, all Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And then there's some guys where they're like, don't call me loser. Don't make fun of me. I just want to give you money and tell you how awesome you are. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on on the person some of them like to eat other guys come okay so <laughs> then are we are we trans are we transitioning into like the cuckolding realm yes okay like a lot of them like to watch mm-hmm. me have sex if i'm having sex which i'm not right now <laughs> <laughs> i mean outside of work i'm not having sex but right. um They do, when I do have sex outside of work, like when I'm in a relationship or whatever, Mm -hmm. they like to watch and I charge them a pretty penny Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they sit there and they watch and I just basically do what I do and that's talk shit. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, afterwards, some of them will eat the other guys come, sometimes not. Just depends yeah, on. It, it depends. It also depends on a guy, mm-hmm. on the guy, because like a lot of some guys are not very like comfortable with another guy eating mm-hmm. their cum. Right. Yes, that, that would make a lot of sense. Totally. Yeah. Um, does have like when you have active slaves, does that ever like what's your dating life like? Like, is that ever tricky for you? Oh <laughs> man. Um I would say I don't. Right now, I don't have a dating life. I got out of a four-year extremely abusive relationship, so I'm not, like, out there looking for anyone, mm-hmm. like, because, yeah, I still got some healing to do. Yeah. Like, because that was a lot. Yeah. Um, But when I was in the relationship, like, he wouldn't, like, he wouldn't believe me that these were just like submissives Mm -hmm. like oh you're fucking them you're doing this you're no like you of all people should know i'm not fucking a submissive Mm -hmm. like was he also in the industry he was okay hopefully he's he stays away though because right but you're saying like he he's somebody who worked in the industry understood how like different, you know, work. We actually and... met on the set of a ten man gangbang, so no excuse. <laughs> Legit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that I feel like he he knew who you were and and what you were about from the start. So. Yep, and yeah. I was straight up. I was like, "Look, this is what I do for a living," but like. This is me in real life. I'm chill. I'm cool. Like, I would like a partner and Mm -hmm. a husband. And these are all my goals. And he was like, okay, okay. But then, like, everything went to shit. Yeah. Once you're ready to start dating again, what do you think you would be, you would look for in a guy? Um, well, obviously he has to be black. (laughs) Um, Long hair, um, like skinny to medium. Mm -hmm. Um, He's probably going to end up being a crip because, like, I attract crips. I don't know why, but I do. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, he doesn't have to be, but I'm just saying historically speaking. You have a type. I have a type. Yeah. And my type has me, Mm -hmm. I guess, because, like, like... I attract these guys and I'm like, that's, I don't, I don't know how, like, yeah. cause I'm just like, I'm, I'm nerdy lady over here. Like, I don't know what it is about, about me that gang bangers love, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Well, I feel like, I mean, look, you're super hot. So I feel like probably most guys would be into you, but maybe you're just more receptive to the guys that fit that type. And so that's like, you know, so it kind of makes sense that you guys come together. Like someone who you're not into, like you wouldn't give those vibes of like, oh, I could be interested in you. So then like they never really venture further. Cause I could see that also too, that you could be like super intimidating. Oh, I walk around everywhere. Like I got my mean mug on. Cause I'm like, I don't want creepers coming up to me yeah but like if i see someone that's cute like i've just like it's hard to describe but a very specific type in like if it fits in within that range and i see the guy i'll be like like kind of smile or something but i probably won't go up to them and say hi because i'm really fucking shy really surprisingly yes so if you see a guy that out in public that you might be interested in he's got to approach you Yes, absolutely. Because, mm-hmm. like, number one, I'm not chasing these dudes. Number two, I'm just, yeah, I'm kind of an introvert. Mm-hmm. Even though, like, when I'm on camera or whatever, obviously I'm not yeah. introverted. But, like, I'm, I can be extroverted in comfortable spaces. Yeah. No, that makes sense. But, like, out in public, I'm not comfortable. If a fan sees you out in public, um, can he approach you? And and if so, like, what's what's a good way to do it? Well, I mean, it depends. If I'm with my daughter, obviously, 
please don't do that. That's not very nice. <laughs> um, but like the best way to approach me, give me a handful of cash, God damn it, and <laughs> drop to your knees and kiss my toe. Wow. And say, hello, princess. I'm here to serve you. <laughs> or if you're not not one of those kind, then you can just be like, hey, hi, what's up? And or like I'll, your work. Yeah. And I'll awkwardly be like, hi, I am awkward lady. <laughs> like, <laughs> I will try to <laughs> try to get in this conversation, but it might not make too much sense. Do you think you would ever date a fan? Man, you know what? I wanted to say no before. Mm -hmm. And I think I might I might still say no, but like the one time that I gave like a fan a chance, he fucking fucked it up. Mm. Like you are not about to sit here and like be all awesome for a month and then all of a sudden like become inconsistent and expect mm -hmm. me to stick around for that. Like mm -hmm. Nah, like what, I'm good on that. What was the change? It was just like, it went from like, I'm like, I felt like I was a priority to where I wasn't a priority. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, well, that's because I'm single. And I was like, well, that's cool. I'm single too. And I'm not going to waste no more goddamn time on you. Because mm -hmm. obviously you're showing me like. I don't know what your agenda was, but it obviously wasn't a relationship eventually. Yeah. Not like right now, but it, like eventually. Yeah. I think that's something that should be worked towards. If yeah. You're talking with someone. Yeah. Where did you meet him? Well, I first, I didn't meet him. Um, he saw me once um, at... Easy E's um, new gravestone reveal back in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess he recognized me or whatever. And he said he didn't even come up to me. Um, but then like on Instagram, I was on there and I saw like the picture and I'm like, oh, this cute black guy with all this hair. And I was like all right, I'll follow you back just because you're cute. Mm -hmm. And, like, I saw we had a couple of mutual friends. So I followed him back, and, like, we were chatting it up and everything. And then, like, I thought that was cool. But then, like, it kind of was, like, not paying too much attention to me. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, I've got men begging and paying for my attention. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to sit here and beg you to pay attention to me, especially yeah. when you came for me. Like, yeah. I didn't know who the fuck you were. Yeah. Like, god damn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck that. Right? You're a fucking princess. Yeah, I am a fucking princess. <laughs> like, god damn it. And fucking treat me like one or get the fuck out. That, that's how I feel now. Yeah. And I think you should feel that way. And I think every woman should feel that way. I agree. Yeah. Because, like, when it comes down to it, women are the fucking prize. Mm -hmm. Like... Dudes want to act like, oh, I'm this, I'm that. No, you're a fucking dude. You want the fucking woman. The woman doesn't need you. You need the fucking woman. Because without that woman, you're going to be stuck with your homies. Are you going to sit there and fuck your homies all day? No. <laughs> you need a fucking woman. I mean, I guess it depends on your sexual orientation. But that, yeah, that's true. That when it comes it. to heterosexual relationships, right. yeah. dudes should already know women are the prize. Yes. Like pursue them, court them, love them, prioritize them, pay attention to them, treat them right. And just keep doing that until you're dead, I guess. <laughs> and you'll have a good relationship. Um, Cause if you fuck it up, then no matter how long you've been together, she's eventually going to be like, Oh no, like I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like it took me fucking four years to fucking wake up out of that shit. Like, I feel like it's like sometimes when you fall in love, like, Maybe the chemicals or something. It's kind of like you're um, under a spell or something. Yeah. 
and it's like everyone's telling you what's going on, you're experiencing experiencing what's going on, but like your heart and your brain are like incongruent and you just, you're like, I'm just going to deal with it. He'll totally change. He said he's going to, he, no, no the fuck he will not. I was just having a conversation with my Pilates teacher about that this morning. I know this is a little bit random, but I had a toxic relationship with a guy when I was 22 and he was 20, he was, he was 33. Ironically, he was uh, high up at Wicked at the time. He's no longer in the industry. So, and none of you guys would know him. So don't try to guess. No, it's not fucking Brad Armstrong. Um, <laughs> is but, it Steve? No, it's not Steve. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and, I mean, the way that I let him treat me, like, I look back at it, and I'm just like, what was I thinking? Right? Like, what was I thinking? It's just so insane, and I bought all of his bullshit, and he was totally cheating on me the entire time, exactly. lying to me, and I just, and, yeah, that whole thing, I was like, I can change him, you know? I'm, like, fucking 22. Like, I don't know shit. I can change him. He'll be different for me, and I just, like... What, you know, and, but I'm glad I had that relationship because I feel like it really, it helped me understand what I don't want, exactly. you know, like That's... now I know, like, I'll never let anyone treat me like that ever again. Absolutely. Like I feel, feel you 100 million percent on yeah. that one. Like it's, it's sad that like sometimes we have to go through these things, but you know, when you're kind of a hard headed woman. Mm -hmm the universe is going to throw you some crazy shit. Yeah. Because they're you're not going to learn any yeah. other way. Yeah. Unless if it's like, okay, this is some crazy shit. And you know what I find too? I find that the universe continues to present you with the same problems until, until you, yes. Yes. Until like <laughs> you get over whatever character defect it is that like you need to work on. You will keep encountering the same issues, like the same toxic people or like yes. the same situations. So I absolutely fucking lutely. Yeah. Do you believe in the law of attraction? Yes. Very yeah. much so. Yeah. I agree. Um, speaking of the law of attraction, um, is penis size important to you? <laughs> Absolutely. fucking lutely <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Sorry, it's on my list of questions. I, I mean, had to ask it. <laughs> like, you don't have to be, like, Mandingo or Shane Diesel. Um, but, like, you, you need to have at least, like, something like that going on. I don't know how much that is. That, is that many like, long. Is that like eight inches? Something like that. And then maybe like, well, at least like something like that. Okay. Like, because you know what? One thing, like I I do love big dicks. Um, but I noticed that when I was dating a guy in the industry a long time ago, um, it was Jack Napier. He had a huge fucking dick. And that shit taking that like all day every day it ends up like hurting yeah and like i'd be sitting there with ice packs yeah but then like he'd want more so i'd be yeah. like oh god damn like yeah and then it became not so pleasurable mm -hmm. so like i'd rather have a guy that that is of a good size but mm -hmm. not like too gigantic to take on the regular yeah because, like, I can do the big dicks, but not all day, every day. Yeah. There was a study that I had uh, Dr. Nicole Prousey on, and she did a study on, like, penis size and, like, or, like a real, like, scientific in-the-lab study Ooh, with different women about, like, what their preferred penis size was. And there was definitely a difference between, like, you know, the boyfriend penis, right, the yeah. everyday penis, and, like, the one-night stand penis. And the yeah. one-night stand penis was definitely bigger. But, like, when you're talking about someone that you're with, frequently women gravitated towards a smaller size. Yes. Yeah. It's still not small. Right. Just smaller. Just, I don't even say smaller. I just say a slightly less large. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> so, um, you said in an interview once that you wanted to have a clown gangbang. Yes. Um, I, this is a topic that I'm, I love because I actually have, like, if you've watched my podcast 
over the years. I've only mentioned this a couple of times, but I kind of like have a fetish for like angry clown porn. So did you ever make that happen? I didn't, but I still want to like, cause I like, I'm weird. I love clowns. <laughs> Obviously I'm obsessed with Harley and yeah. Like, but even before that, like I've, just, I like clowns. They're cute. Would you want, like, so for me, I'm like, yes. I want, like, an angry clown. Like, an it-looking clown, you know? Like, someone who looks like it's going to, like, devour me. Like, very aggressive kind yeah. of sex. Like, are you, or, or are you thinking, like, happy clown? Like, is there a specific kind of clown that you're after? Oh. Or just clown? <gasps> I mean, just a clown. Like, angry ones are cute. And, like, so are the smiley ones. Like, I think if I'm going to do a gangbang with a bunch of clowns, I want a bunch of different kinds of clowns. Yeah. Angry clowns, happy clowns, yeah. sad clowns. Like, you want, like, the full clown spectrum. Yes, the full <laughs> clown spectrum. Do you think, like, the big shoes and everything? Because I feel like, especially yes. with gangbang, that would be hard. Yes. I need right? the big shoes. <laughs> and you know what? Because guys always take their shoes off during big gangbangs, don't they? Well, actually, that's not true. Sometimes they leave it on because they yeah. don't want to step another guy's cum. Pretty much. Yeah. So there's no excuse. They can wear. Y'all, whatever dudes I end up shooting this with. You can wear those goddamn clown shoes and I will suck the fuck out of your dicks. <laughs> and you're going to you're going to take it, you're going to like it. <laughs> Joe's like fucking cracking up in the corner over here like, <laughs> "Sorry. <laughs> Stop making my sound guy laugh." <laughs> Sorry. We're we're going to be for serious. But you know that like if you do a clown gangbang, the guys are going to ask to take the shoes off because that's like what they do like when you're shooting a scene, they're always like, can I take the pants and off? And I'm going to tell them, no. <laughs> they're going to be like, please let me take the shoes off. No. That's going to be the biggest problem in the scene is the fucking shoes. Everyone's you know going to be bitching about the shoes. They'll shoe. be fine. They'll, they will, if they're getting to fuck me, hmm. they'll be fine. How many, how many clowns are you thinking? Man, at least eight. That's a lot of clowns. At least eight. That's a lot of costuming. I mean, and that's a lot of clown. Sh I mean, where are you going to source all those clown shoes from? I mean, it's really, it's not too hard. You just go on Amazon. I guess that's true. You yeah. of all people would know exactly where to I get the cosplay exactly stuff. I know where to get all the stuff. So. You're like, don't worry. Yeah. I have your shoes. Like, don't worry to whoever's going to end up producing this. <laughs> like, I will help finding with, help with finding wardrobe. I feel like after that gangbang, I would want to create some kind of like exhibit in a museum with just like 10 clown shoes, pairs of clown shoes. Yes, we put it in the sex museum in Vegas. And people were like, why is there 10 clown shoes here? It's like, well. Well, <laughs> this was quite, quite an event that was, we've been waiting for years to happen. <laughs> I don't know. It. it well, I think it'll happen because, like, again, the law of attraction. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that that would be super cool, especially because, like, I'm from Vegas, born and raised. Be like, look, the dudes wore these clown shoes and they fucked me and it's in a museum. That would be, like, the coolest thing ever. Yeah, it would be. I think you just need to put your clown gangbang energy out there into the universe and the universe shall provide. <laughs> I I have been. I mean, like, like I told you, I met my ex on a 10-man gangbang. So, like, I think maybe, like, I've been shut off to the idea for a while. Mm -hmm. But, like, now that I'm, like, Free and yeah, the possibilities yeah, are endless. Exactly. Like now I can attract the clowns, but I don't want any clowns in my dating life. So if you're a fucking clown, stay the fuck away from me. Unless if you're going to do the porno with me and dress up like a clown, but don't like really be a clown because that's yeah. not cool. You can't be like a clown in the sense of like a, a dude, like yeah. a dick, like a Yeah, yeah. Clown. You can't be a fucking asshole. Yeah. You can only no be more. a clown, like, cosplay. Yes. Angry gangbang clown. That's yes. the kind of clown we're going for. You can be for. angry during the sex. That's cool. You can do what, whatever. <laughs> like, as soon as that's over, you better be nice. <laughs> oh, my God. And I would not go home with any of the clowns. 
No. No. Not even no. if he I was like. I would never do that again. Ever. No. I learned my lesson. Not if he was like sexy. No. Long hair. No. I learned. No. <laughs> That's what happened last time. I feel like we're going to like have an interview again in a year and you're going to be with someone. You're going to be like, so I met him on the set of a 10 man clown gangbang. Oh my God. (laughs) No, I can't do that. No, no, no. I don't think it's a good idea to to mix work with pleasure, um, especially the kinds of relationships that I end up in. Like, it's like, I don't know if it's just me bringing, like, this craziness out of these dudes, but, like, once they get me, Mm -hmm. it's just, like, complete bullshit. And it's like, wait, okay? Like, what is it about me that makes you behave like that? And that's what I'm trying to figure out, why, why I attract that kind of shit. Yeah. But I'm not doing it no more. No. Because I'll realize, I'll be like, oh, I know what happened last time I did this. Right. I am not repeating that shit. Yeah. So I have a strict rule now. No more guys in porn. Like, no more. Because my career is worth far more than a guy. Yeah. That's going to pull some bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all got to have those experiences to figure out what we want. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now here I am. Clowns. (laughs) <laughs> but the clown gang bang but the clown gang bang. that's gonna happen yes <laughs> all right leah thank you so much for coming on this has been great um if you're okay sticking around i have a couple of questions from my patreon members sure. that if we can do a little like q a for them um exclusive for my patreon members I sure they would love why that. not um, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media plug all your links um you can find me LeahFalcon.com, LeahFans.com. That's my only fans. Um, the little at sign, Leia Falcon on Twitter, Instagram. Um, I just started doing the TikToks, so Leia does it, spelled D-U-Z, like easy does it. Like easy motherfucking E. Sorry. <laughs> no, like um, I had to explain that, I guess. Um, and Leia is spelled L-E-Y-A. Perfect. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. I am also on TikTok um, at Holly Randall Unfiltered. And of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us. See you next week. <laughs>